Yeah. Let's thank the speaker again. Okay. Uh, let's take the rest of the questions offline. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, our next speaker is Victor Chernozukov. Uh, the title is Exact and Robust Conformal Inference Methods for Predictive Machine Learning with Dependent Data. Thank you. Thank you. So this is joint work with Kaspar Wittrich and uh, Yin Chu Ru. What we are doing here, we are trying to extend the conformal inference for predictive confidence sets that were proposed uh, by Vladimir Vovk uh, uh, in the IED or exchangeable case to, to the more general settings that allow for time series uh, dependent data. The way we proceed, we first uh, uh, v uh, realize that this proposal uh, is a special instance of permutation inference introduced by Fisher and Hoevding in uh, 1930s and 50s. Uh, then we uh, proceed to develop a permutation method that accounts for serial dependence um, by including the block structures uh, in the permutation scheme. And we obtain two results. Um, one result is that uh, for time series data uh, that admit um, mixing innovations, strongly mixing innovations of residuals, we show that the method is approximately valid and we give non-asymptotic error bounds. And if the data happens to be IAD or exchangeable by, by some luck, uh, the method is actually exactly valid. So um, let me give you the details. Um, so we work with a time series of, um, of length T naught. You have uh, uh, features and uh, the responses, uh, Ys and Xs. Our goal is to construct a confidence set for future realizations of Y for, T, uh, for T1 periods ahead based on the trajectory of features. Um, the construction will rely on a generic machine learning prediction method of the form you take a feature value x and you map it into f hat of x. This f hat can depend on the data. Uh, later on, we will uh, require some other conditions on this uh, uh, black box method, but any, uh, any, any method here uh, with some stability properties would work. Uh, then we're going to construct confidence sets by inverting uh, a test. So we will uh, let little y denote a test value for a realization of the future trajectory. And we're going to test plausibility of each value. Then we're going to collect all the plausible values and report them as the confidence set. More specifically, uh, for each tested value, we're going to formulate an augmented data set that contains the current history, uh, current history as well as the hy hy hypothetical history for the future, uh, for the future values. Um, then, uh, given this um, augmented data set, you formulate a test statistic called conformity score in this literature. You, uh, so here it's going to be the hypothetical, residu uh, the hypothetical residual, and you take the LP norm of these hypothetical residuals. Uh, then we're going to do permutations on these statistics. So here, um, Z pi is going to denote a permutation of this data for a given permutation a pi that leaves in a, a set capital pi. And pi is going to be a group of permutations, which group I will describe later. Um, but anyway, so what we're going to do, we're going to compute the orbit of the statistic under the perm this permutation group. This, so we're going to map out all the permutation values. And then we're going to check if the observed test statistic as z uh, takes on an unlikely value, or um, in other words, whether it falls off the orbit. Um, you can visualize, visualize this via histogram, so you're going to map out the permutation values and you're going to see if your uh, test statistic is unlikely, uh, it takes on an unlikely value like it, it does here or not. Okay. Um, and um, so the, the, the key question is which, which permutations should we consider? So at least uh, like we're going to consider uh, permutations that partly preserve dependencies in the, in the data. So one uh, set of permutations are going to be cyclical permutations. Um, you can arrange the observation numbers in a circle, and basically each permutation moves you uh, along the circle. So the, like observation number eight becomes number one in the first permutation, in the second it becomes number two, and so on. Right. So that's. Um, if t, if the number of time uh, of, ta of, uh, of uh, data points is too big, then you could also do the block permutations where you move blocks around the uh, circle. 
and uh, that's uh, that's that. Yeah, that, these are the permutation groups that we considered. Both both uh, both of these permutations are groups, which is which is actually important for some of the results. Um, once you uh, once you have these permutations defined, you run the algorithm. The input is data, miss coverage level alpha. You specify the statistic, uh, the uh, uh, per the per permutation group, and then you run loop over the test values. First, you define the augmented data z of y. Then you um, compute uh, compute the uh, the orbit. You, you you compute the permutation values, and then you compute the p value, which simply counts the fraction of uh, of the values that fall above the observed value of the statistic. And then in, at the end, you report the uh, one minus alpha confidence set, which collects all the values uh, of uh, potential values of y, where the p value is not too small. Okay. Right. And then uh, we have two results. One result is a warm up result, and it's essentially for free. It's, it, it basically directly follows from Hoevding's um, argument. Uh, so here we say if the data is, uh, is IAD or more generally an exchangeable sequence, then we have that this p hat, the p value evaluated at the true trajectory, it obeys this relation, which uh, says that the probability that the p value Fall, falls below the small level alpha is itself small. Uh, is itself small. Uh, so in other words, the p hat is stochastically dominated by a uniform random variable. Uh, this Im immediately implies that the confidence set that we've constructed covers the true trajectory with the, uh, uh, at least the prescribed probability. And this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, um, this directly follows from Hoevding's argument, which critically relies on the spy being a group, which implies the uh, invariance of quantiles of the permutation distribution uh, under uh, like reshuffling of the data, and uh, combined with the exchangeability hypothesis, it, 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 it immediately implies the result. So the proof is just like these, these two lines. Okay, so then we get to the main result uh, of the of the paper, which is the approximate validity under time series dependence. So here, uh, so here we we're going to rely on two conditions. So the first condition is a. So this condition uh, will say that, okay, we work with the statistic S, but uh, this statistic S needs to be close to another statistic S star, which does not contain a hat here. So this function, this uh, uh, machine learning uh, predict, uh, uh, prediction rule has to be close to uh, a fixed pre pre prediction rule F star that does not uh, depend on the data. So in some sense, this F hat has to be consistent for some function F star. This does not have to be the true regression function. It just has to be consistent for something. And we require the pointwise and prediction norm consistency. And this is just a more general statement of, of, of what I just said for more general statistics. Um, so these, um, so we need this S star to be close to S star, uh, sorry, S to be close to S star. And once we did this replacement, we're going to require that the permutation distribution of this uh, statistic S star has to be approximately ergodic for the true distribution of S star. Okay, so the two distributions have to be close. And we verify, so this is a non-trivial condition, we verify this condition for cyclical and block permutation schemes for the case where the data admits strongly mixing residuals. So if you take these, uh, these to be the residuals, so yt minus f star xt, um, um, then if, if they are strongly mixing, then this, uh, this condition holds. This condition itself is quite general because it allows for uh, general data sequences yt and xt. Um, including some non-stationary processes. So for example, this could contain unit roots and things like that. Okay. As a, all we need is that the uh, error sequence is uh, strongly mixing. So once we have this, we have this general result that says that under the approximate ergodicity condition and the small error condition, the p-value is approximately di uh, distributed as uniform with the margin of error epsilon. And our confidence set covers the future trajectory with probability one minus alpha and the margin of error epsilon, where epsilon is calculated exactly. And uh, let me uh, con con conclude by saying that this is uh, actually a computationally tractable algorithm because the permutation uh, method that I described uh, often, uh, often is often equivalent to just permuting the residuals. It works well in the simulation experiments, and there are some applications to the counterfactual inference in the companion work that you can find online.
time for questions. Yes. Oh yeah, there, it, it, it's in the, yeah, you could see it in the, the in the in the error bounds. You could see this. The uh, you could see it. Yeah. Okay. Let's thank the speaker again.